Greetings in the master's name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And we always count it a privilege to be able to come and share with you a word in due season. And today I want to talk about gathering. In the book of Daniel, in chapter 7, Daniel had a concern about the fourth beast. And his concern was is that he was, the Bible says he was exceedingly dreadful. And he seemed to be more powerful than the other beasts. And the explanation that was given to Daniel was that this fourth beast is going to speak blasphemous words against the Most High. He's going to wear the saints out. And he's going to seek to change times and seasons. Now let's go into that a little bit. Key thing being, in this last day, we are being challenged with things we've never been challenged before. Revelation talks about the gathering of those who are going to fight against the Lord and His Christ, the Lord and His people, a great army that's going to come together in the battle of Armageddon against the Lord and His Christ. I want to let you know that the beginning stages of that is happening now, in the sense that that is a tactic that the enemy is employing now in the world. And how he's doing it is, is subtly behind the scenes is a gathering together of those who are coming against the things of God in a real profound way. They're attempting to change laws and they're, they're changing systems that we've had and held dear that were uh, initiated by God, such as marriage between a man and woman is being challenged. Um, as of recent, uh, I'm not sure when you're listening to this video, but Romans 1 now is considered hate speech because it was tied to a defense bill. So they're slowly doing things behind the scenes. And on the front side, they're wearing the saints out. They're beginning to inundate us with things that have nothing to do with God. There's a sensing in the world that there should be a merging of the religions and we shall all together come together under a quote-unquote one world order or a new world. These are the things that are coming into place to wear the saints out. The Bible says that bad company corrupts good morals and is deadening our effect on reaching the world. The Bible says in Ephesians 4 and 11 that he called the apostle, the prophet, the pastor, the teacher, the evangelist, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, for the unifying of us coming together under one faith. And this is key. We must begin to position ourselves so we can be prepared and not caught off guard. The Lord said it to me like this. He said, many people are prepared to go, but not prepared to fight. We must begin to stand for righteousness in a way that we haven't before, which means we must renounce and denounce the things of dishonesty, those things that we know to be wrong, not just in our personal lives, but publicly. We need, we need to have a voice for righteousness that's not based in this false sense of you are condemning somebody and not showing love if you speak against what they're doing. We must speak truth to power in a way that we haven't before, backed up by the anointing of God that can only be solidified in your life if you're sown out, sold out to Him. Well, let me say it like this. Uh, 2 Thessalonians, when Paul was talking to the church, one of the things he said concerning, you know, the coming of the Lord, he said, don't let no man fool you. He said, that day ain't coming until the son of perdition is revealed. There are things that are going to be revealed in this season in an attempt to wear us out so that when the Lord does come, many people will be caught off guard. The problem with the five foolish virgins was it wasn't that they wasn't there waiting with the other five. It's just that they ain't take no oil with them. The Bible speaks to us about our preparation or how we need to look. See, we're not wearing um, skirts and dresses as a bride. We're looking as warriors. The Bible says that we need to wear the helmet of salvation breastplate of righteousness, our loins girded about with truth, having a shield of faith, a sword of the spirit, and our feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. That is our view. And in that particular scripture, it talks about the fiery darts of the wicked one coming against us in a way where we can quench the fiery darts that he's, he's firing. Now this is key. What Satan is beginning to do, Satan is beginning to develop weapons that are not just darts, but they're weapons of mass destruction. They're not unveiled. The problem that we have with some of the third world countries is that they keep lying to us about what their original intent is. And we can't sleep on them because if we do, they be then develop something while men slept. The enemy so tears amongst the weak, they be then develop something that'll make us equal to us in might. 
maybe not in money, but in might. Our strength in the United States has been based on the fact that we could beat everybody. Satan is marshalling himself together to prevail against the church. I know the scripture says that he won't, but that don't stop him from fighting. So we ourselves must begin to prepare ourselves to battle against the evil onslaughts, the secret things that are going on. God says he ain't going to do nothing unless he reveals it to his servants, his prophets. He said, I have not seen, he has not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of men the things that God prepared for them that love him. The next scripture says, but he has revealed them by his spirit. So as we tap into God, as we are infused with the power of the Holy Spirit, we need to exercise all the gifts that's been given to us, all the things that are available to us. The Bible says angels are sent as ministering spirits on behalf of the saints. The Bible says he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty, and he shall give his angels charge over thee. The Bible says the Holy Spirit is a guide and a teacher. The Bible says the weapons of our warfare warfare is not carnal but mighty through God so we must begin to adjust our thinking so we're not just waiting to go but we're ready to fight because many people who are just waiting to go are going to be worn out by the society and they won't have no oil when he does show up Jesus was talking and he, he said in one occasion he said if they tell you that I'm out in the desert don't go he said if they tell you that I'm in a secret chamber don't go he said so in this evil day and people's waiting for me. There are going to be false Christs that are going to arise who are going to propagate or say things that are not true concerning me. Because rather than fighting the battles that need to be fought concerning me, people are going to be waiting. And just like when people waited on Moses to return from the top of the mountain, they become weary and well-doing, and then they begin to get drawn away of their own lust, then engage in things that have nothing to do with me, all in the sense, or all in the mindset that we're waiting on the Lord, being enticed and seduced by doctrines of devils who slowly creep in to corrupt the minds of God's people so that they don't have oil, so that they don't have a helmet, they don't have a breastplate, but they do have a shout and a dance. But no power. So we must begin to adjust our theology and stop being so lazy as it relates to the things of God. I say it and I'll say it again. People must increase their prayer time so that their personal time with God outweighs this socialism or that social time we spend with the Lord when we gather together as a church. No, I'm not saying not go to church, but for God's sakes, that cannot be the only time that you're accessing or talking to who you say is your Lord and Savior. The Bible said, unless those days be shortened, the very elect will be deceived. So we must begin to strengthen ourselves. So as we're preparing for the soon return of our king, we'll be able to quench the fiery darts and deal with these, these weapons that the enemy is coming against us with. Because the key thing is, if, we, if it's time to fight, if you're weakened before battle, you won't, your stamina won't be there. I happened to be a soldier and I was in the first Gulf War and the reason why we won was because our enemy was malnourished. He didn't have weapons. He didn't even have armor or clothes. So many times when we made advancements on the enemy, they gave up because it was better to live as a captive, glory to God, than fight without the things that they needed. We don't want to be caught in that position as it relates to the things of God. We don't want to be in a position where Satan has taken advantage of us so that when he does strike, we're too weak to defend ourselves. So let's come together as a collective body. Let's gather together in the unity of the faith standing against those things that are going to war against us. Every other religion out there can band together under one banner and say we're attempting to have peace. But Jesus said that that is not the reason why I came. I didn't come to bring peace but a sword. I am not of the world and neither are you. We are a peculiar people called out as priests in this due season, this last season, to make a difference, to stand with the Lord and his Christ. Because if you didn't know, in the book of Revelation, there is a time when he will return to vanquish all his enemies. And he'll have his army with us, with him. And we're part of that army. But if you don't think you need to fight, you may be led astray. So strengthen your walk, strengthen your resolve. Begin to seek him in a way that you haven't. So that we can all come together and prepare the body 
for his return. I want to say thank you and God bless you.